Hello, welcome to Maths with Jay. So we've got two equations in two unknowns, x and y, and we want to find the values of x and y that will solve both of these equations. Now the first one is nice and simple, we call this a linear equation. If we were to do a graph of this, that would be a straight line. But the second one is a parabola. If you were to make y the subject of that equation, you would get y equals something involving 2x squared, and you know that that would be a parabola. So in fact, what you're going to expect to happen here, or at least one possibility, is that you're going to have something like this, where we may well get two solutions, where the straight line is meeting the parabola in two points. So I haven't really thought here about what the line looks like, whether the gradient's positive or negative, and which way up the parabola is. So whenever you've got a parabola kind of question and a straight line, you could have that or that, you would ex be expecting that they'd be up to two solutions. They're not necessarily going to be two solutions because you could have the situation where we've got a parabola and the line just touches the curve. So we could have one solution, or we could have a parabola and a straight line where they don't even meet at all. So it's possible to have no solutions. But given that this question says solve the simultaneous equations, it's, it's quite likely that there will be at least one solution. Right, so let's clear the screen. And we'll number our equations as we would normally do. So let's say the first one is number one and the second one is number two. Now what we want to do here is start with the second equation because that's the one that's got the x squared in it. And then we're going to make y the subject there and substitute that into the first equation so that we'll end up getting a quadratic equation, a quadratic just in x to solve first of all. So let's have a look at how that will work. So first of all, we're going to be looking at equation two. And we're making y the subject. So y is going to be two x squared minus one. And we may want to refer to this equation later on, so let's just call this equation three. So our adapted form of question, equation two, we're calling equation three. And then we're going to substitute that into the other equation. So that means in the first equation, I've got y plus three x is four. But instead of the y, I'm going to write two x squared minus one. So that's substituting in for the y. And then I've got the plus 3x equals 4. And you can see I can rearrange that to make a quadratic equation. So I'm looking to write this as something times x squared plus something times x plus something or other equals 0. And then I'm hoping I'll be able to factorise. So we don't need to do much to get it into that, the form that we want, 2x squared doesn't need anything doing to it. And then we'd want to write down the term in x, so we're just going to write down plus 3x. And now the other term, the constant term, is going to come from the minus 1, and we're going to be subtracting the 4 from both sides, so that will give us minus 1, minus 4 is minus 5, and then equals 0. So in order to get that into a quadratic equation that we can solve, we need to have it equal to 0. And we've got some prime numbers there. In fact, all three of the numbers there are prime, aren't they? But we're interested in the first and the last one because the, the two at the beginning gives us the number to multiply the x. So we must have 2x and x to give us 2x squared. And the only way we can get minus 5, looking at the constant term, is by multiplying 5 and 1 together. One of those has got to be positive, one negative. So there are only two possible places for the 5. So it's either going to be in the first bracket or the second bracket. Now I want to show you how you can know that it's not in the second bracket. So I'm going to actually first of all write down something that is obviously, or maybe not obviously, but something that's not going to work, just so that you can easily see why we know what is going to work. So this one isn't going to work, so you wouldn't normally write this down. I'm just writing it down so that you can really see what happens. If we put the 5 in the second bracket, we're going to be multiplying the 2x by 5 and the 1 will multiply x, so we're going to get 10x and x, and there's no way we can add those or subtract them to get 3x. So we know that that is not what we want. So let's clear that away. So now we know that we must have the 5 in the first bracket 
and the 1 in the other bracket. So now we're getting 5 times x and 2x times 1, so that's 2x. And we want plus 3x, so we want to have plus 5 and minus 1. So now we can solve the equation. So we know we've either got to have that 2x plus 5 is 0, or x minus 1 is 0. So if 2x plus 5 is 0, 2x must be negative 5. So x is negative 5 over 2, or negative 2.5. And if x minus 1 is 0, then x must be equal to 1. So we have now found the value of x that solves both of those equations. So the next thing we want to do is find what y is for each of those values of x. So we have a choice now. We can use equation 1 or equation 2, or we could possibly use equation 3, because that does give us y as the subject in terms of x. But I think it might be easier to use equation 1 simply because it's a linear equation. So I think I'm going to do that, but you do have a choice at this stage. So, and also remember we have um, two different values of x, and I think I would choose to do the easier value of x, which is 1, rather than minus 5 over 2, because you don't know when you're working through a question if you've made a mistake or not. It's going to be quicker to substitute in the integer than the, the one that involves a negative and a, and a fraction, and to check the x and y value from that. So let's do that. So we're going to substitute in So we're saying what value we're taking. We're going to substitute x equals 1 into equation 1. And let's see what that gives us. So we're going to have that y plus 3 times 1 equals 4. So that gives us that y is equal to 1. And then we're going to check that value. So before we even try putting in the other x value, we want to make sure that this one is right, because this one is going to be really easy to check. So let's check in equation 2. So we're now checking both values in equation 2. So we're working out 2 times 1 squared minus y, which is minus 1. So that's 2 minus 1, which is 1. And that's looking really hopeful because that is correct. That's worked out nicely. So the next thing to do is the same sort of thing with the other value. So x equals minus 5 over 2. So we're going to substitute that in. Again, I think it's going to be easier to use the, uh, the first equation. So substitute x equals minus 5 over 2 in equation 1. So that gives us that y plus, and we've got minus, so minus 5 over 2 times 3, so minus 15 over 2 equals 4. So that will give us that y is equal to, and what I would do is think of 4 as being 8 halves, and then add on the 15 over 2, and that gives me 23 over 2. See how I prefer to write fractions like this as top heavy rather than writing them as mixed numbers. And then I'm going to check that in the second equation. So 2 times x squared. You see this is much harder than the first one, so that's you can see now I wanted to do x equals 1 first of all. So now we have got to work out 2 times x squared will be negative 5 over 2 times negative 5 over 2, so it will be 25 over 4. And then subtract 23 over 2. So here we can cancel dividing by 2, so we've got 25 over 2 minus 23 over 2 is equal to 2 over 2, which is 1. So it's looking good. And then we would write our answers down. So we have found, note that these have got to be written like this. So when x equals 1, y equals 1. And when x equals minus 5 over 2, y is equal to 23 over 2. So notice you don't just write down the x values and then the y values separately. We've got to show how they pair up. So now you might like to try doing a sketch of two graphs, y plus 3x is 4 and 2x squared minus y is 1, and see 
that the line meets the parabola in the points, so the points would be 1, 1 and minus 5 over 2, 23 over 2. So in this question we weren't asked to think of these as graphs, but you could do, and those would be the points where the two graphs meet if you had thought of them in that way.